um ra put a really good feature out actually um kind of talking about the impact that this is having on the electronic music scene you know something of interest to me and they did a really cool piece here um highlighting some of the promoters who have kind of been affected by it and what they're doing to kind of and how they're you know how they're approaching things uh now and again it's an interesting thing to think about because i think um i wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily say obviously you you would you'd be hesitant to say it's a good thing right for this happen and all and all but there is a part of me that's like once this does settle down and things get back to normal there has to be some level of change even if it's just personal of course people are going to have their own personal changes that they kind of enact right whether it's a hobby you picked up during this time um whether it's a skill you're learning whether it's the kind of deciding to kind of get rid of some toxic friends people are going to do some changes right they're going to enact some kind of change in how they approach life i'm definitely sure this is going to change people's view on how they approach like yeah how they approach life in general right maybe they take life too seriously maybe they're not decided to make that big move ask like that person blah 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 a lot of a bevy of list of options so i think it's only right for a scene a subculture a community to also do the same thing right to kind of take a look in the mirror and be like you know what do i actually want to be the same person once this thing sells the tilt downs and starts back up again because we have to be we have to understand or we have to kind of accept that the climate isn't going to be the same once things get back get back going right we're not going to have the same clubs we're probably not going to have the same people working there um the same artists might not be around right it could for everyone saying the clubs could leave and clubs could close down there might be some djs and some producers who might just like pack it in and be like you know what i had a good run i'm just gonna get a regular job now and just you know whatever play whenever i want to play later on so the, the whole climate could change the whole landscape could be completely different from what it is so i think it's a definitely a time especially uk wise i speak you speak for my home um nation uh predominantly that there definitely needs to be a different kind of approach in terms of how we and how we kind of in how we consume club nights or how we consume you know electronic music or dance music in that kind of environment there needs to be a different approach to it there needs to be a bit more of a insistence on kind of getting in local young promoters to kind of cultivate a vibe a scene around a particular club and then using the bigger names to kind of um you know give it the necessary bump but not basically relying on the big names to kind of uh pay for that club to stay alive or pay its rent i think the rent should be paid via the local promoters local dealers that are out there doing good things um allow them to have a platform especially the bigger clubs x or y there's no reason why they should be having mega big people coming in playing right every single week for residencies going on for six to 12 weeks they don't need to do that they could easily have um residents playing um because it's in a real real hot spot it's right in the middle of old street and shoreditch they're always going to have crazy foot traffic it's very popular um it's popular especially within the university students that live that live and study around their area um you don't need to have you know six weeks of uh this big dj doing the night right? you could just have predominantly you know resident djs playing and then kind of fill in the gaps here and there when you have a bit of a dead week with the big name to kind of make sure you guys aren't losing money but it definitely needs to be more of a an, more of a what do you call it more of a an appeal to get fresher newer more interesting uh relevant site pacific you know it presents locale wise comparisons coming in because that would be pretty cool right to see people who actually live around the area bringing their friends down right that making because i know for me when when you go when you go abroad and you happen to bump into somebody who lives and breathes the scene and they take you to a club that you haven't heard about and then you catch a vibe there usually it's not because of you know the person playing away on the deck it's not because you oh look that's good you answered it's because the the club that you're in the people that are in that space they sort of represent what that space is about and you can suddenly kind of and even though you might be in the middle of fucking ukraine you can there's some sort of similarity between you guys right You're like oh cool this this person's like me right they're seeking out this really dingy dusty warehouse by somewhere in the middle of kiev to go and rave instead of going to the kind of glitzy bar because they know this represents them much more or represents their scene a lot more and again for outsiders too it's a far better representation of what's actually going on right you'd hate it imagine being like from berlin and you come to london to rave happen to go into x or y and you just see the same person that you would have saw at burger and play it's not really a fun experience isn't it? you you would want to see somebody that actually is from the cold it's from that city is from that scene um has some sort of tie to the local community i don't know that that, that would make it more interesting than just going to see dj hell who you saw over there playing here again because he's a big 
guy that everyone's going to play. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, this article from RA kind of explains a lot more better than I could. It's called Perspective from the Scene via Promoters. Um, I'll read a couple of them for you just to kind of get a vibe of what's kind of going on. So it says here, um, party crews discuss how they've been impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. And this is Buttons from Berlin. They had a really good mix, actually. I've, I've played... Did I? It was, it was, it was it an RA mix? It must have been an RA mix I played recently. They're really, really cool. Um, definitely check it out. But they said the following. They said, um, we voluntarily cancelled our March 20th party over one week prior because it seemed like the German authorities were dragging their feet on the mandate on mandating preventive measures. This is the first time we've called off our monthly uh, parties since uh, June 2016. And we've halted the planning of our program until the coast looks clear, which is mad in it. Right. Because I think that was that was I remember one of the best things I remember about promoting, like regardless of what was going on in the month, regardless of what was happening in your life. There was always a date in your kind of calendar where you knew that you had to program a night, design a flyer, market it. Uh, get you know um, tell your friends uh, you know get the lineup sorted make sure you do all the kind of decorations at the club when you get there sound check all that good stuff right would happen on that day and it would be something to really savor especially during that especially at that on especially during that time when I was doing them I wasn't going out as often as I am now right I probably didn't have the means to I was or I probably was working a lot more I was working a lot more of a strenuous job right and you're kind of on that kind of lower level you're kind of putting in a lot more hours than you might do when you're kind of mid-level um or a senior person i'd assume right i don't know but i do remember it being something to look forward to and really i don't, I, can't, I can remember maybe one occasion where we had to kind of cancel it out right beforehand but usually you never cancelled it you took every single date that was given to you you did every single date that was that that you were kind of a, that you agreed upon earlier because of course you know you didn't want the person you didn't want to be the person to call up the club or the bar owner and tell them hey i can't do it because you know you know as soon as you say that you're going to be off the list of people that they can kind of rely on and then they're just going to give the next person who's waiting in the queue and for sure you have to be aware that there's a whole line of people waiting to kind of take your spot so you could never afford to cancel a, a night at all um so they continue here they said um the water is choppy the situation is hitting close to home hospitalized uh, family members in italy i was working in a front line buttons residence mad alba continues to log extra hours as a surgeon in Viventi's new clinic, which is mad, isn't it? Madness. And like many in our scene, we are dealing with the loss, loss of work and loss of income. Like our new venue, About Blank, which put up a call for help last week with the crowdfunding camp, which is definitely weird, isn't it? How could a big popular club like About Blank be at jeopardy of kind of closing? Obviously, I'm assuming it's, it's, duly, it's partly based to the pandemic, but there is maybe a conversation that needs to be had about how the clubs kind of function in terms of businesses and as to, in terms of how they kind of handle their finances if that's kind of an or or having to say like how is a club that's you know for a country that for the most part you know is kind of propped up by tourism especially kind of techno tourism how they're not able to kind of have anything in reserves for like a bad time is really weird isn't it like it doesn't make any sort of sense again it's not the kind of under, about blank isn't the underground club it's not something that you wouldn't have heard of right anytime you go to berlin look at the listings they've always got some sort of big dj playing there so it's not you know it's not uh it's not like a a newly opened club or anything it's something that people are aware, very aware of but they, i don't know there's it seems to be happening quite often now again i'm not sure what's happening finance well i'm not sure if the the landscape in berlin is changing and more private investors are coming in and taking up all the land but that's a question that needs to be definitely asked about what's going on in that in that regard. But our article continues here. It says here, in effort to help out some of our most valuable family members, um, those who are freelancers in gig economy, we've joined the Berlin Collective Action, a nightlife emergency fund. We currently call on the passionate uh, on those passionate about Berlin nightlife who have steady income or who are financially secure to join us in supporting those in need, which is a very cool idea. I think they're kind of crowdfunding people's salaries in general, taking a little bit from everyone and then kind of divvying that to people who kind of are responsible for putting on the nights that they enjoy, which is a really cool socialist way to kind of do things. And again, I like the idea that they're taking initiative on themselves and not waiting for the government to give them handouts. They're kind of putting that to place and making sure everyone's in a, is in a good position. 
Um, and then this next one here is so a half moon in New York. So the following the COVID-19 has reaped widespread effects on curators in New York City as we no longer have access to public spaces to bring our community together. As the outbreak intensifies, we've been put in public health and safety first, meaning that we've postponed any consideration of even smaller intimate in-studio events such as in-studio live streams and programming. Residents are now encouraged to submit pre-recorded mixes to be played during their social time, which is that's an interesting one. I've seen a lot of live streams, right? Where it looks like there's a whole studio set up i think the ones where someone's just doing them in their house and sending them into someone to kind of play or their or their, i guess you could do it where if someone gave you their stream key you could stream on boiler room from your own house and it'll be fine in it but i'm seeing a lot of live streams especially from the defected guys i saw one with michael bibby and somebody else who else was in his house might have been um hot since 1982 or whatever his name is right but there's a whole production people involved in it, it looks like. And again, I'm not too sure because a lot of, from my experience, a lot of people that DJ are quite proficient with technical and audio equipment, right? So there they could be this idea that a lot of them are just hiring their gear and then setting up themselves and then just getting it sent back again, right? But still, you're having someone come in with a gear who's, you know, we know that this virus can live on inanimate objects for three days or something like that. Um, then you're having other people come into your crib you're probably gonna have a couple of drinks maybe you have a bit of a smoke it doesn't necessarily feel like people are taking it that seriously when it comes to the electronic music thing now again i think live streaming from your own house right with your own decks with the webcam looking at looking at your kitchen window cool in it you're not gonna hurt anyone but doing the whole studio thing or going to an actual venue which i've seen people doing i've seen a uh, fold doing the same thing right doing a kind of live stream via fold on a sunday just doesn't seem like the best um decision to make especially during these times and again but i know the need to kind of make sure people don't forget about you and to kind of give the years platform to play but i just don't know this is the right thing to do but a lot of people are doing it but i'm glad to see someone has also kind of um seen the you know why that could be a little bit of an issue in half moon guys inside not to do it and they continue here with the importance of social distancing and self quarantine the impact has isolated us from our community and disconnected us from the people who are integral to helping us do our work properly with no community there is no half moon but that's i think is the same for everyone isn't it i think all promoters now are realizing just how just for the, especially for the ones that spam you on whatsapp right or spam you on facebook messenger they're now realizing how important it is to actually cultivate real long-standing relationships with people so that if you are in hard times or if you do kind of get behind in payments or if you kind of have to um or if you kind of you know lose your ass because everyone's refunding tickets suddenly those people that you actually treat like community members are not just as like you know transactions they can now be the people that can maybe support you and give you money or support or you know donate or submit money to your patreon wherever it may be right those people can do that but when you treat them like a transaction and you keep spamming them with facebook messages or with email newsletters saying it, you've, it's only 90 percent, 90 percent the take is gone come and get your thing like no one's going to listen to you that way right um it says here but luckily as as an online radio collective finding old creative solutions to connect to people regardless of their location has always been one of our reasons to being currently we're working internally to understand the music community needs and how we can show up uh for them during this time whether during a uh, thorough video workshop amplifying our residents releases or fundraising if you have the means you can support us through your patreon as as we get better to serve our volunteers and residents affected by the uh, affected economically during this time so that's a very cool message there then from netherlands radio radius says the following it's very unclear if we'll survive this summer we have a high rent in amsterdam and we are renting a state-of-the-art art studio state-of-the-art sound system from sweden there are still a lot of bills to be paid but our expected income has completely vanished which is you know what most people are kind of surviving when it seems like by the looks of it but it also forces us to rethink our existence as a music platform luckily we're well connected with developers and designers and have always been building a brand online too with live streams and playlists which is something i would like to see a little bit more a look done a little bit more right um maybe there could be an avenue for more live stream radio stations in a kind of similar vein as an nts but maybe with more of a video element to it that allows local dealers to kind of get on you know on a bigger platform amplify their sound and it also allows promoters um and people like that to also see who they can book based on the views because a lot of these people are just you know they're quite binary it's going to book you based on the views you get on youtube which is fine or the likes you get on instagram cool but if there if there's a kind of a pla if there's various different platforms they can go on and you can kind of command and then you could use that as a way to kind of gauge your metrics 
right? And say, hey, agent, hey, booking guy, look, look what I did on this platform, right? I just sent my viewers over here and I got the highest rated live stream in the last six months or whatever maybe. And then, then from there, they may be able to find new talent that way. That might be a good way to do things. Because then again, you're seeing the person, you're seeing what they look like, how they carry themselves behind the decks. That could be a really cool way. But also could be another option for clubs themselves to maybe offer a different avenue for revenue maybe allowing people to kind of rent out their spaces to do their live streams and their radio uh, or call it radio shows in their club when people are not using it during the day um uh, outside of kind of the standard club events that could be a good way to go about things um it's to sort of offer up different solutions but it's sad to hear you know that a place in netherlands um or in amsterdam specifically that has a high you know high amount of tourists coming in during you know during the season especially during the festival season they are you know they get charged a high amount of rent there's not some sort of collaboration or some sort of deal with the local council to enable kind of the entertainment industry places or especially the nighttime economy places to kind of stay open or to kind of pay a more of a subsidized rate that the, all those conversations need, need to be had especially with all the clubs that are going to kind of crumble or are, are going to be unable to sustain themselves during this period you can't have you can't have you can have some places disappearing fine through lack of balance in the books whatever but you can't have the whole scene disappear because you know the government isn't willing to give them any kind of bailout or whatever maybe and you know you, you could argue these places are probably more important than some of the other places that are getting bailout money um but that's a conversation of another day um it says here the second paragraph says um, we're now building an online radio video platform sorry to make our program online reconnecting with partners enables a radio station to, to form new collaborations both national and abroad Wall Street DJ sets talks and interviews which definitely I've mentioned before we're bringing our sponsor um, Kun Kornoit and Absolute with us to compensate DJs and artists with these tough times as well and on the platform of our community can donate to both radio radio and charities uh, but we will need more to survive getting a bank loan could be an option but we can't forecast anything since we um, it's not known if the shutdown will take one two or six months which is definitely true but again I think it needs to be a little bit more of a not career, not kind of out of the box thinking when it comes to these clubs and these places why some of these venues don't have regular scheduled talks and events where they kind of fly in big guests or especially people that are going to play later on in the day you know most DJs are bored in their hotel room not doing anything you could chuck them an extra hundred quid a couple of uh, maybe 500 i'm not sure how much it's going to be to get them to kind of you know certain bar was played in a fold right Maybe he's not a good example, but let's say um no Richard Horton played at Fold during his album release, and you know he could have easily done a little discussion at Fold, you know a few hours beforehand, right? Talking about what went into the album. He's a geek, you know he's a geek anyway. He loves talking about music. He loves talking about technology. You could easily sit there for forty five minutes, pick up five hundred quid. You could charge up on a tenner before they get to the event, and suddenly you've got another revenue stream. And everyone could do that in their own respective fields. Everyone's got somebody in a little scene who could put in enough of a crowd to justify them putting putting a couple of microphones in, in the mixer and just talking over the sound system anyone could do that but again there needs to be a little bit more of a because again i think if you're going to have just the biggest top 10 djs in the ra playing in your venue at least you should supplement it by allowing the local community to do these sort of events workshops and all this sort of stuff you should give them the kind of onus to kind of do that on their own you know um uh, on their own dime or you know just say hey if we give you the first couple of what events free and we kind of split the door or something that that would be a good way to go about things and again would would go a long way to kind of cultivate actual community and not just you know transactions that you kind of harass through email and then the last one here just to kind of round things up this is a babes right i'm pretty sure it's pronounced bbz from london it said the following um from the dawn of club culture black queer and trans marginalized people as a whole have been the innovators and the fuel but when shit like this happens we're always impacted the worst which is mm, a bit of a loaded thing to say i think everyone's impacted the worst i don't think it's mainly a one subsect of people or people how or, you know how you'd like to be represented as or what you kind of ascribe yourself to and if anything as well london is probably the best place for for just not giving a shit i think for the most part i think queer knights have a hard job keeping out general public coming in as opposed to they have a harder job putting on the actual event for the most part right people love going to queer nights people love going to gay nights maybe even more so in the, in the uk so it's not as if it's just affecting one segment of the population it affects everybody you know what i mean especially if this is your career this is your livelihood right you're you're a pa or you're a receptionist or you're an event organizer or an event booker or 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 
you know you do the accounts for some label like this is going to affect every single person you're the delivery guy you're the courier it, like, it doesn't it doesn't really uh, delineate against you know sexual or gender representation it's not really about that at all but you know I understand where they're coming from, but that's not it at all. But here you go. Uh, the persistent uncertainty in the current situation has, has thrown a lot of us into a very precarious situation. And when dealing with folks already on the margins of this capitalist society, it's even more critical. Mamas, these guys are on the mama snake vibe, isn't it? Um, in the immediate future, as a collective, we're trying to prioritize our mental health and well being as individuals. That way, we're best placed to meet the basic needs of one another housing, food, safety, mental, and physical well being. This is a madness, isn't it? Um, nightlife is only is the only stream of income for a lot of us so it turned our worlds upside down for the foreseeable future so we're calling on the assistance of our allies and the wider club community to check in with innovators and use our privilege where possible that is an insane paragraph and i don't i don't even understand what none of that means but yeah um everyone's hurting um some more so than others some it seems like they're kind of slightly enjoying it but yeah um Da, 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 da. definitely check them out a lot of really cool um opinions here i'll put in the show notes for you guys to read yourselves it's called perspectives from the scene this is from the promoters definitely check that out i think it's a really interesting article 